Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 when I wear this hat. Hey, if it's your birthday, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Today's topic of discussion just sort of came to me, and that was electronics are stupid. And I want you to hear me out here. I don't mean it in the sense that electronics are stupid in the sense that they're stupid. I mean that they're stupid in the sense that they work in a world of absolutes. Electronics, I think, baffle a lot of us uh, when it comes to auto repair because it's something we can't quite see, we can't quite put our fingers on, and we can't necessarily get dirty fixing them. So it tends to elude us a lot of times when there's an electrical problem with a vehicle. But I just want you to keep in mind, whenever you're tackling or confronting an electrical problem, electronics work in absolutes. So if a component isn't working correctly or you've got an electronic issue, study the circuit and do what you can to learn how basic electricity works. With a basic understanding of electricity, an understanding of the system that you're working on, things become a bit more obvious, uh, and obviously some practice as well. But I just want you to think that there, there isn't some electrical gremlin in there trying to mess up your day. And trust me, I've been beat up by electrical problems plenty of times in my career, but when it comes down to it and I actually find the source of the issue, it's often something that's quite simple. And once again, going back to that world of absolutes, I mean, something that maybe is just a blown fuse, isn't plugged in, or perhaps a mouse chewed through a wire. Uh, these things can, can throw you for a loop, but you know, if you go through the basic steps, and once again, I, I can't stress enough, electronics are stupid. They, they don't have an understanding. They don't have a conscience. They aren't out to get you. So when I say electronics are stupid, that's what I mean. Electronics, they're just, on and off. That's the way computers work too. It's basically a series of algorithms based on things that are on or off. And if knowing that, going into it, knowing basically how they work, you can conquer a lot of electronic problems that uh, you might run into. So the next time you run into an electrical problem, oh, and here's the other thing. And, and I often say this as well. The battery is the alpha and the omega as far as the electrical system is concerned. If you have an electrical problem, or if you have several electrical problems, especially if, if you have several electrical problems, I strongly urge you, I suggest, the first place you go is to the battery. Check the battery's condition, check the connections, check the wiring, everything around the battery. Because if the battery's got low voltage, the entire system has low voltage. It affects every other system on the vehicle, particularly with modern vehicles that are heavy into electronic operations. So if, if they're not working on the proper voltage, once again, they're stupid. If they don't get the proper voltage, they don't know what to do, and they begin to fail, and sometimes in strange, bizarre ways. And also, I'll throw this one out there. A lot of you are really into doing resistance checks. Resistance checks are valid. They do prove a point from time to time, but I can tell you to check the dynamic operation of a circuit, the voltage drop test is really the way to go. A voltage drop test is gonna tell you more about how the circuit is working than any other test. And I hope to throw out some of those, uh, some of those tests on my Air at the Car Guide channel at some point. But that being said, there is a write-up on voltage drop testing, and a lot of the things that I've discussed in this video over at airatthecarguide.com, I wrote about it. Yep, I really did. I'll put a link in the description to that so you can go there and check that out. But check the battery, low system voltage, screws everything up. Also connections, corroded connections, those kind of things, eee, those can mess you up. And look for collision repairs because people in collision shops worry about how it looks when they're done. They may not necessarily be as concerned with that wiring harness that might have gotten pinched during that collision that's causing some mystery electrical problem. So if the vehicle's been in a collision or appears to have been in a collision, start looking around for some busted wire somewhere. I'd love to hear what you have to say on the subject because I'm sure you have plenty, plenty, plenty to talk about here. So I will now throw the discussion back out to you. There will be a link in the description to a discussion about this video over at ericthecarguy.com. In addition to that, you can always comment down below if you feel so inclined, whatever you feel like doing. And hey, if you have automotive questions, uh, I would ask that you head over to ericthecarguy.com. There's a welcome video there to tell you about the stuff we have at ericthecarguy.com to help you with those automotive issues. Uh, if you wish to connect with me socially, I can be found on Google+, Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram. And I close each of my videos, including these silly discussions on ETCG1, with be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and thanks for watching.